everything in a business should be focused towards generating revenue. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. I am not saying that your admin person who hates cold calling should pick up the phone and start dialing. Absolutely not. What I'm saying is your admin person should be there. So they're doing a tiny little bit of admin, but as someone comes in, you're saying, Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Um, and really making connection with your members. If your members have a positive experience, they're much less likely to cancel. Hey, what's up, everybody? That was myself and Freddie Fenton, this episode's guest, giving you a little teaser, some of the information that you're going to get on this podcast. It's a great conversation because I recently found out that where I was losing money in my business and where I was making more money, and it really surprised me, but I did not know until I got the information, the data, the numbers, and then started diving into them and looking at them. And that's what you can do with your software. I don't think a lot of owners really utilize their software to the max to dig in, to get the information they need to dig into the numbers and find out where you're losing money and cut your losses and making money and double down. So a lot of great information on how to do just that in this conversation with Freddie Fenton. Everybody. Welcome to Masters in Fitness Business Podcast, where you get to stand on the shoulders of giants. And coming to us for a third time, he's already broken the record for most appearances on the podcast, is Freddie Fenton, coming to us uh, from live from Australia, from the other side of the pond, other side of the world, really. So again, it's early morning his time. So Freddie, thanks again mm -hmm. for uh, joining us. I saw you enjoying your cup of coffee which is yep. a must for me in the morning. Uh, I definitely have things that I will not give up, and that is one of them. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, why software won't fit your business, won't fix your business for you. So if something's broken in your business, you can't just use software as you know duct tape to try to hold it together. It's just not a good fit. So who better to talk software with for your business than Freddie Fenton, who is with Clubworks, who uh, they have a uh, terrific, it's been a terrific software solution for my business. Um, it's uh, it's worked really well for us. And uh, I just uh, hired this guy, Ivan, um, he, as a part-time CFO. It's, it's actually a great business model. So he's, uh, he's marketing himself as a part-time CFO and he's uh, combing through our books and helping me, uh, kind of look at the business from a na uh, number standpoint, but he's able to j jump right into the club works and create reports so that we can understand, better understand the numbers that we have coming in. So um, for us, it's been great. But anyway, uh, you're the perfect person to talk software with, whether it's club works or anything else. So um, we were talking before we went live. First of all, welcome and good morning, Freddie. I'm sorry. That's all good. Hey, Jim. Thank you very okay. much for having me again. Uh, really excited to get going. Yeah. And uh, I hope you saw the, the pictures of the Stanley Cup. I did get to kiss I it. I did. I yeah. did. And uh, it's funny. A buddy of mine said, you know, um, that Stanley Cup, it's been going around St. Louis. I think everybody in St. Louis has had their picture with the cup, which is awesome. Yeah. But he said it's it's responsible for the flu outbreak because everybody also kisses the cup. <laughs> so oh, it's just it's just a big typhoid Mary walking around the city. But anyway, um, so software won't fix your business. We were talking before we went live um, and I was telling giving you the analogy of it's it's almost Halloween here, which is one of my favorite holidays. I love it. <laughs> but if I don't have an idea of what I want to be, what I want my costume to be when I go into the Halloween store, it becomes a nightmare because I just, because I get overwhelmed. Uh, like, Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Okay. Uh, what, how can I cobble that together and blah, blah, blah. And it becomes just uh, a nightmare of an experience. So when I go in there saying, okay, I want to be, you know, Prince, I go in there, I know exactly what I'm looking for. Bang, bang, bing, bang, boom. I pick out all the things that I need and I'm out of there. It's a no brainer. It's a quick, easy, painless experience because I go in knowing who I want to be and what I'm looking for. And I just go in and get it versus just kind of going in and just my, my eyes just glossing over. So I think software is the same when it comes to a software that helps you with your business. So you want to go through some of the points that you found are key 
because you work with hundreds of owners, you know, fitness yeah. business owners, helping them set up their software. So you want to go through some of the bullet points that you mentioned that owners can uh, identify in their business uh, that will help them pick the right piece of software for their business. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like that analogy and I think it's, it simplifies things really well because for us, what we want to see is obviously we want to help you in, in any way that we can. Uh, we want to make sure that things are running really smoothly for you. But if you have one sort of overarching thing that you want to get done, do you want to see your numbers better? Do you want to save time? Do you want to make sure your staff is being productive? What's the one thing that you want to get out of a software experience? And then if you have a couple of like focus points around that. So if I go, I want to make sure that my staff is being super productive. I want to automate as much of this stuff as I possibly can. And I want to make sure that I can see my numbers very clearly every day. That way I can then, we can then build a battle plan around that. We can go from day one, when we get everything set up in the system, you'll be able to see your numbers. We'll have some templates in the system and we'll be good to go. That way we start, like the very starting point is accomplishing exactly what you set out to accomplish. From there, we can then build on it as you move through and go, oh, actually, you know, I really wanted to see this report. I wanted to diversify my my memberships that I offer, all of these sort of things we can add on. But if we've got sort of that initial starting point knocked out, that's great. Um, another thing for me is obviously, if we start this discovery process, we sit down, we have a conversation, we go through the system and we realize actually, Automation is probably not the biggest thing for you right now. What you want to do is um, is make sure that you can have your members sign up in one space. If you want, like, so bringing more members in as much as much as possible, or managing prospects, or something along those lines. If we find that that is a bigger need, we can pivot and focus on that. But I think the the best thing for me is having some idea of what you need and knowing your processes and and how you are running things having that sort of either documented or in your head very clearly so that we can try and fit the software to that as close as possible and identify if there's any issues in that from the conversations we have. That's an interesting point that you bring up. So let me ask you if somebody comes to you or Ian uh, McGeorge, the U S rep, and they say, I want to start using your software. Is there a checklist where you go, well, hold on, let's make sure that you're ready for software. So is there a checklist that owners should go through to make sure that they have what they need before they jump to a software solution? So I think less of a, less of a checklist, more of a software will fit your business at, at any point of time. If you've got five members or 50 members. Uh, but the idea is making sure that we don't overcomplicate and overwhelm you before you, you get up and running. So I think it's always having that initial conversation and saying, what is our number one driving thing that we want to accomplish? Why do we need to accomplish that? Um, and then how can we fit to that? And what are you doing? What are you doing to, what are you doing to do that in the beginning? And then how, how is software going to help you accomplish that? So as an example, you know, I might have someone with 40 members come to me and they might say, um, I want to have 800 members by the end of the year. And I'll go, that's a really awesome goal. What are you doing at the moment to accomplish that? And they say, oh, I'm not doing any marketing or anything like that, but I want to use a software that's going to be able to automate my email outreach. Cool. So we can help you with the email outreach, but... I, I can tell you now it's probably not going to be enough to, to grow that membership base by almost, you know, a, a, that significant of an amount without doing some other marketing and really creating a good name for yourself. Um, and then I would pivot and, and ask a question and say, what are you doing to retain the members that you've currently got? And how can we make that a really strong process to then sort of start generating new referrals and doing it that way, which is going to help you grow your business. So it's those sort of things of having, making sure that the idea that we have and, and the reason that we want to get software is airtight and it's the right reason so that we don't start something that's unrealistic, fall down in that unrealistic expectation. And then you go, no, nope, software is not for me. I'm going back to my spreadsheet. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's kind of like 
I don't have a good analogy of that, but if you don't have a good system ahead of time, and if you're not fully educated and up to speed on the software and not utilizing it, then it's easy to bring, to blame the tool instead yeah. of the craftsman. Right. Um, so I think that's a great point. So I know for me in the evolution of my business, when I first opened up, I hired this lady um, who was fantastic um, to help me with my branding and marketing. First question she asked me is, who's your ideal customer? And I said, well, everybody, I want every, I want everybody walking by, driving by to come in. And she quickly educated me. And that's a, and that's a key word, educated me, that that is a fallacy that you have an ideal client and you need to find out who it is so that you can tailor everything to attract that client because like attracts like. So you mentioned that like when you, an owner contacts you, that you educate them. Like, so if this is your goal, okay, the software will help you do this, but you also need to do X, Y, and Z. So do you guys, how often do you find when you get, somebody coming to you the first time that you have to perform that educational service for them? All the time. Um, and it's not from a place of, of someone being ignorant or, or not investing in their, in what they're doing. But honestly, both Ian and myself, we probably have 100 to 150 conversations a month with fitness business owners. And they're from all range. You know, some some of them have like eight eight locations set up, they're absolutely pumping and they go, no, nope, time for me to change over to a different software uh, versus someone who's very just starting out. Um, and everybody has different needs and, and different goals essentially. So we will we'll sit down with them and we'll go, this is very candidly where, where we think the software will have limitations. Um, in our experience, what we think a really good idea would be is to X, Y, Z and support the software in that way so that it can support your business. Um, I had, I had a lady come to me the other day who said, I just don't know where I'm losing money. Um, and like, that's, that's a huge, huge issue, right? To me, I said, look, I can give you the, the visualization of what that should look like. I can tell you, you know, where your membership fees are coming from, how, how that's all running. We can set you up with some automatic direct debits until you can really understand that financial reporting and understand your finances and your setup, I think we're only halfway there. So very similarly to you, she went out and she reached out to someone in the finance world to help her sort of understand if she was, you know, charging the right amount for her, for her products, if she was doing the right thing from a financial point of view, and they were able to use Clubworks to really understand where she was at as a business. So I think, it's saying we can provide you with the information, but if you can't interpret it, then there's a big problem. Yeah, I know for me, it was all about education because when I opened Catalyst five years ago, I was bringing in 20 of my own clients, my personal clients, and that was it. That was the extent of my membership. And um, I wanted something that was going to automate their payments and help them schedule. That's it. Um, and fast forward to today, five years later, where I have just north of 170 clients and I meet, started working with Ivan and we're drilling down into the numbers, like how do people, uh, which of my marketing efforts is bringing in the most clients yeah. and tracking that so I can understand where I'm getting the most bang for my buck on the marketing to how many new clients, I, how many leads I'm getting. Uh, how many new clients I'm getting a, a month, how many uh, clients I'm losing a month um, to uh, reverse engineering my uh, membership offerings to make sure that they're profitable uh, and that they're good for the clients and good for us to uh, drilling down to what's our most popular membership, what's our least popular um, and what those numbers look like. So he's really educated me tremendously what our average e EFT per client is. Um, he's really educated me on how to look at the numbers to really better understand my business, what's working, what's not, to where I can focus my energy. Now that's a five-year learning curve. Okay. 
So, and that's a lot of education, which I've had to get, you know, I reached out to Thomas Plummer, STS, um, you guys, um, and to Ivan and on and on and on. So I'm always educated because when I came in, I was a trainer and I looked at everything through a trainer's eyes. So I've had to educate myself to look at it through a business owner's eyes versus a trainer's eyes because it's an entirely different skill set. So, but the point I'm trying to make is that in that five year growth span, that five year evolution of Catalyst, I've gone through three iterations of software. Yeah. Because, you know, as I've grown the first one, I outgrew it. It didn't have the features I wanted. The second one didn't have the features I wanted, was was overpaying for it. And then now I'm on you guys and we're very happy because I don't right now I don't see a ceiling on um, as far as being able to scale my business. So my question is, is that when people are shopping for software, what do they need to look for in order to make sure it's the right right software for them after they figure out what they want their business to do, the goals, the three goals for their business? So I think um, I, I get a lot of people coming to me saying, oh, I'm a system, systems person. I don't need support. I don't need training. I'll figure it out by myself. And I always, <laughs> as much as possible, ask people to pull back on the reins with that and say, Hey, let's just do one or two training sessions. Like we've, we've set this system up now thousands of times. So we want to be able to make sure it's doing the right thing for you. So I think support is really, is really huge. Um, candor during this process is really huge. Um, I know a lot of, a lot of people who are salespeople as such. I, I like to think of our Clubworks team as more of a consultant side of things, but, um, our, if, uh, if you're looking at, um, you know, someone who says they're a salesperson, they, they're probably not going to be confrontational with you in the in the discovery process. And I, I mean that in a nice way. Like, I'm not going to yell at you and say that your, you know, your business model is stupid or anything like that because I don't know. But I might say, hey, look, I don't think that's a really good idea. What I would suggest is this, this and this. Um so being able to make sure that you're learning from every conversation and every process that you're having, because I guarantee that salesperson is learning as well. So I, I think that's probably two really big things. Um, obviously making sure that it's affordable and it's going to be affordable for you as you go into the future. Um, and just making sure that it's, it's simple enough to, as you expand, train people on. Um, you know, I, my background is in HR software. It's what I what I used to work in and, and seeing people trying to onboard and learn all these new different systems and different ideas. It just if you're not doing it right and it's really hard to understand, it gets very complicated very quickly. Whereas if you've got a system in place, you know that you've got the support there to help you. You internally you know what you're doing, but also you can pick up a phone if there's an issue. That then creates confidence. It creates buy-in with your staff. Everybody's going to be using it correctly, and you're going to be able to get the most out of it. Gotcha. So education is the key on everything. If you don't know, ask. Yeah. Don't be afraid to look stupid. or be. I, I call it be the stupidest person in the room. I call mm -hmm. myself the stupidest person in the room all the time because if somebody says something, I don't know what it means. I ask them. Uh, because I, I don't want to just go mm, 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 and, you know, just fake like I know, because then I'm robbing myself and I'm wasting their time. So um, when you decide, so it's important to what I heard you say was it's important to have your systems and then you get the software to meet your systems, yeah. right? You don't get software hoping that that's going to provide you systems. Because that's going to be the equivalent of going in the Halloween store, not knowing what your costume is. You're just going to be lost, overwhelmed with choices. So they have to understand that they need some kind of systems, either have it written down or have it in their head or have an idea of what they want it to look like. And then you and then make the software fit that. Correct. Yeah. So what does a. Like when somebody comes on board with you guys, what have your most successful clients done from an education, onboarding, 
training, like in an ideal world, what does that look like? Yeah. So and just quickly, I'll take a step back because I just thought of a really, I, I hope a good analogy then. Um, so for me, banking will take um, your system is like your your business process. That's your recipe. Clubworks or the, so the software that you use, the ingredients. And that's basically where we're at is if I give you, if I just dump a bunch of ingredients in front of you, you're going to be like, oh, I don't know what to do. If you've just got the recipe in front of you, you can't make the cake. So it's combining those two elements to create a really, obviously, a, a nice experience for you and for your members. Excellent. Um, That's a good I analogy. Think, I like that. <laughs> well, uh, I hope that one sticks. I'll, uh, I'll remember that now. Um, yeah, so I think for us, our, our most successful clients ask questions. And as you said, it's for us, it's not even about being the, the dumbest person in the room, although I do really like that. I think it's about making sure that you clarify things so you might have an understanding of what ian or i say but always making sure that you're going back and saying actually hey i'm a little bit confused about this can we can we clarify as opposed to just letting us move on because the last thing we want to do is think that we understand something come away and then a month later you call us and say this is broken i don't know what to do um which by the way is fine and never hesitate to do that but we would like to make sure that you're getting the most out of it from day dot so I think um, obviously if you have staff getting the, their buy-in and, and their understanding and leaning on, on them as well. So, you know, your sales staff might be like, oh, I've been using this process in my head for ages and I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's replicate that. Um, if your admin staff are used to doing something in a particular order, let's figure out how we can sort of replicate that in the system. So it's making sure that, Everybody in your organization has buy-in. They, they believe in what you're doing and they're positive. It's that you're doing enough training um, and making sure that you understand the system and that they understand the system. And then I guess just constantly asking questions. You know, we, we expect to be absolutely spammed by somebody from the, the support side of things for the first couple of months. And that is completely fine. That's what we want. We don't want to overwhelm you by constantly reaching out and going, hey, is everything okay? Is everything okay? And then you go, well, yeah, everything's fine. Why wouldn't it be? And then you feel sort of upset. But if you know, if you have a question, ask it, ask it quickly. And um, I think that those are probably my, my biggest things, making sure that you invest in that upfront run because, you know, as you move forward, you know, the, the first two or three months are going to be pretty heavy. The next six months are going to be, a breeze after that. Yeah, I think those are uh, those two. The point you mentioned at the end is a very valid point because I know for me when I decided, okay, I'm going to switch software. I took a deep breath <laughs> because I knew what it meant. I knew that the transition, there were going to be glitches, there were going to be issues that we had to deal with, there were going to be problems that we we're going to have to solve, we we're going to have to bring everybody up to speed, we we're going to have to, I, have, I was going to have to get up to speed myself, bring my staff up to speed and bring my clients up to speed. So it, it's a huge process. So I knew that. So I'm like, okay, this is what we're doing. It's not going to come in a surprise. So it's important that you know that when you choose a software solution, not all the time, if you got five clients, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. But if you got, you know, 175 clients, there's going to be some issues. So just know that that's the investment. It's going to be a lot of upfront work, but all yeah. of that upfront work is going to be well worth it. And the other thing too, is that with training, I know when I first started managing employees, I thought, okay, I told them what to do. Now they're going to do it. Nope. <laughs> I have to tell them what they do. And then they're going to get maybe 50% of it, right? And then so I'm going to have to tell them again, remind them. And then they're going to get about 60%, right? And then I'm going to have to remind them again. They're going to get about 70%, right? And hopefully we get up to about 80, 85%. Um, and then, but well, I have to constantly manage con and uh, remind them and enforce it and all of those things, hold them accountable to it in order for it to work. It's not going to be like, 
it, it would be easy for me to say, you know, to like the, the person that works at the front desk, okay, I want you to do this. I tell them once and then they don't do it. And I'm like, oh, the software doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's not the case. It's just that's what it means to manage people. Uh, it's just that it takes that constant effort. That's 20, and, you know, each and every day. So I think it's important to, to understand those two points that if there's going to be a lot of upfront work to get it right, but it'll be well worth it in the end. And, um, also it's going to be constantly managing people so that it, the system, your systems don't erode regardless of the software you're using. Yeah. And I, I just to piggyback off that, I think a really good point there is also, a lot of people will say to me, oh, my staff doesn't seem to be doing a lot of as much work as they used to be doing because um, because of your system. I think there's, there's an issue here. And I, I combat that saying, are they not doing as much work as they used to do? Or are you finally seeing that they're not doing the work that they um, You know, we had a, a, a lady when we set up, when we set up a, a sequence for them, which is how we sort of manage our, our automation. We've now got tasks that can be run in sequences. So you can send a text message, an email, and then maybe two days later, you set a task for someone to give them a phone call. And she's like, none of these tasks are being completed. I don't know what's going on. And it turns out that her salesperson was like afraid of picking up the phone. Um, but that, at least. And that's her salesperson. Yeah. Ooh. But I, I mean, it's, I, hey, I work in sales. It's more common than you think. But at mm. least we. Um, at least we're able to figure that out. And she's mm -hmm. now working with, with that person to get up to speed. Whereas before, I'm sure it was the same. I mean, that, that behavior doesn't necessarily change, but you didn't see it. She, she had no idea what was going on. Excellent. So yeah, so she was able to kind of systemize that process so that then she could take a, a higher elevation view of her business. And then new problems popped up that she, that were always there, but she couldn't see them because she was kind of in the mire. Yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. Uh, that's, a, that's a good, good point. All right, so we talked about um, training, the importance of training, education, asking questions, onboarding yourself, your staff, your clients, um, support, making the upfront investment to make sure that it works right in the long term and helps your business grow. Um, so let's talk about now um, how to structure the software to fit your business, not the other way around. Yeah. So yeah. what's the best starting point or approach for that? Yeah. So I think it's always going to be, it's always going to be a marriage um, because I guarantee you that the picture that you have in your head is never going to completely work in any software um it can be get very close and sometimes can even be improved but you know you might come in and say this is exactly what i want to do and then ian or myself will sit there and go we can't do that but what we can do is this and it may be better than we've, well, than we've ever thought um so i think it's it's having that open mindedness to go hey actually that's a good that's a good option instead of going oh well, too bad because I want I want this this thing in my head, and then I'm going to go to someone else, and that someone else is going to say the exact same thing as you're saying. Um, so I think it's always nice to have that sort of idea that you may have to, we may have to be fairly flexible on a few things, and it could be for the benefit of of your company. Um, but I think um, it's it's making sure that you understand the outcomes of everything that you do in in a in a process so if you have a, a sales process that is you know i want to automate all of this and i want to make sure i've got all these emails going out and i you need to understand what each of those emails does um and and why they're there you know you might be sending a whole scatter of emails but one of them might be hey meet the team these are all our trainers we'd really love to help you what that does is engender some so sort of community spirit with your members um, so what you really want to do is be driving that community spirit. Um, I know you mentioned the other day that uh, someone that you were speaking with, speaking with had this uh, link to YouTube videos. that was like a virtual tour um, of, the, of their, their location. I think that's a that's an awesome idea. And I've sort of been, been stealing that and recommending that around the place because I think that's a really nice way of sort of engendering that community spirit and everything as well. 
and it drives people to upsell. So understanding what each step in your process does so that we can sort of convert that over and make sure it's doing the same thing. If we have to go, oh, actually, you know, I think maybe let's let's add the phone call in this in this sales process. Let's add the phone call earlier than, than you currently had it so that we can sort of track it and make sure that someone's feeling really positive before they even get into the facility. Um, you know, I, I was speaking with someone the other day who's like, oh, I've been doing this for years. I know exactly what, what I need to do. My sales process is this. And it was basically sending a text message every single day. That was it. Their, their sales process was text message, two days later, text message, two days later, text message. And I'm like, okay. So there's no phone call. There's no email. There's no, and they're like, oh, I would never send an email. Nobody reads their emails. And I was like, if I get a good email, I will read the email. <laughs> it just has to be a, a decent one. So I think for me, it was taking that step back and going, you can actually add a bunch of like pictures and things and make this a really nice piece of communication. They're going to love that. So let's, let's try and put that up. And then we've, we've been doing that for about two weeks now. And they're like, this is, this is awesome. I'm, I'm saving my members. My members are, are hanging around because their biggest issue was cancellation. And if I'm just purely being texted all the time, text is great, but if that's all the only communication I get with the, the business, it's not fantastic. So I think um, obviously having an idea of what your processes are, understanding what each step in that process is, um, and then we'll have a conversation and we'll sort of find that that middle ground that may or may not be an improvement. Yeah. A um, couple of things. Um, the onboarding videos. This, this podcast subtitle is Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. And I stole that idea from Don Murphy, so I'm going to give him credit, but uh, I did steal it. So I, I did stand on the shoulder of a giant, uh, which is actually um, originally quoted by uh, Sir Isaac Newton, stand on the shoulders of giants. But um, because, you know, no need to reinvent the wheel if it's already been invented. But um, the other thing that you were uh, talking about was um, the uh, sales process. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a shameless plug. I just released, actually today, uh, my latest episode with, is with a gentleman called Eric Charles Russell, who literally wrote the book, um, how, um, The Art of Membership Sales. And he has a five-step process where he talks about the, the um, objective for every email and text should be to get them on the phone. Because yeah. most people don't answer emails. Most people don't answer their phone, especially if they don't know who it is. Everybody reads their text, right? So they read their text because it's easy. So how do you change that? You make it hard by asking them some questions, some simple questions, you know, and then it's like, hey, you know what? Instead of going back and forth, can we just hop on a, a um, yeah. quick phone call to see how I can best help you? You know, so the object of every written communication should be to get them on the phone because nobody ever buys from an email or text. Nobody stays a membership of your gym from an email or text. It's always some kind of face-to-face -face or personal conversation. So um, that's, a, that's a good valid point. So you were talking about, we were talking about um, making our, the software fit our business. So let me ask you a quick um, question. So I want to make sure I want to track where my members are coming from. Are they coming from other members? Are they coming from uh, Google ads? Are they coming from the banner? Are they coming from social media? How do I set that up in Clubworks as a report so that I could track that? So uh, as someone fills out a waiver to become a new client, we have a questionnaire section. Questionnaire section can be set up however you'd like. Um, so you could have one of those questions could be, how did you hear about us? Have all those options or a text field that someone can fill out. Um, we can we can then track that. So that okay. that's, a, that's a nice quick one there. So as someone is signing up, it's automatically listed in there. We can potentially run a few different uh, like URL trackings and those sort of things. But one thing that I like to say is, if you ask that question of a person, they go, "Yeah, how did I hear about you?" And it may have been you know two or three weeks back, but then they flipped through the banner this time. But okay. what you want to know is what initially generated that interest. Gotcha. So, and I, I like that to have that information because I like to know, um, because man, it's easy to spend 
a shitload of money on marketing and get just nothing in return. Just, just taking a giant wad of cash and just throwing it in the trash. I mean, it just oh, it makes me sick to think about it. But so it's nice to know, like, oh, you know, uh, like for us, we put up banners and we get a tremendous we we get a lot of drive by traffic and we get a tremendous amount of business people coming in because of, they see the banner when they drive by or they either call or they come in and those banners cost us like 160 bucks <laughs> you know so if i can get i think last banner we probably got mm, 12 clients and our average eft is right around 300 a month so <laughs> So yeah, that banner paid for itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but it, if I don't ha have that information, I don't know that, yeah. you know? So it's important for me to know that. And I think it would be important for any owner to know that so that you can double down on the campaigns that work. And sometimes it's not even just that it's a banner. It's what the banner said, right. you know? And so if that, whatever that banner said, then I can double down on that message or that demographic. Uh, because I know some months I run, I run Google ads every month, but some months are bombs. Some months really crush it, you know? So it's not necessarily Google ads, but it's what I say in the ads. And so it's nice to know not only which, um, uh, vehicles work, but also what messaging works. But again, I don't know that if I don't have that report. And that's just one example that they can use software for to kind of fix their business because I tell you what, what every business needs beyond it, without exception is new clients, yeah. right? So it's important to know that. Um, so do you have like with your work, you and you're in uh, Ian's work with, with owners coming on board with their software, do you have any other examples of reports that you've helped people set up that has really helped their business or that they've requested uh, so they can help their business. Yeah, absolutely. So just just really quickly, I, I like that. Um, I really like. Obviously, that's a that's an awesome banner. If I can learn a little bit more about that, maybe I'll uh, set, set a couple. Oh, of it's different. simple. It's simple. We put up um, unlimited personal training, uh, two seventy nine a month. And what it did was it let people know that it was affordable. Yeah. And so they came in and we sold, I want to say we had it up for about three months. We sold 12 unlimited memberships. We paid $160 for the banner. You yeah. divide that by three, you know, whatever that is per month, you know, versus three clients a month. So it paid for itself. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's not, good. and that's per month. That's not even, they, they're all annual memberships because you had to sign an annual membership to get that rate. But you know, so that's you know, twelve months times two seventy nine. Oh. So yeah, that that banner paid for itself. So so go ahead. So what are some other uh, examples or suggestions that you have? Yeah. So um, just on that as well, just uh, one thing that I hear a lot is people saying, "Oh, I threw five grand at Google Ads and I got a bunch of clients. That must mean that my Google Ads are working." when all of a sudden we know that the gym down the road actually shut down and people are looking for a place to go um and it's, there's no actual causation in there so i think that's a really a really powerful one and one that i'm still working with our team on um you know internally because we market the same way that a lot of fitness businesses do um i think that's that's a really important thing is making sure that there's not a false causation there because you're going to keep throwing that five grand at google ads and it might not work for you mm -hmm. um so that's a that's a big point and i think in terms of reporting um obviously finances finances are huge um so we have uh, like our daily takings report we have information around sort of any membership payments we have also have the debtors report which i think is a really nice easy one to use it's like who owes me money today and anybody in the system that owes you know is behind on payments at all pops up there so we can look after them accordingly um, we have sort of an absentee report as well, which I think is a nice one. So if someone's not been in for 30 days, we can actually automate sending messages to them. So we can go, hey, I noticed that you haven't been in for a while. I just wanted to make sure that everything's okay, um, you know, and reach out and see if there's anything I can do to help. Uh, and I had someone challenge me on that and say, that's waking a sleeper. If, if 
they're still paying their membership fees, but they're not coming in. Who cares? Let's just leave them. Like, and I'm like, the best way to create a membership and positive member experience is to train that member. That member's not being trained and not finding value. They're much less likely to recommend somebody. They may have just had some really crazy stuff going on at work and they haven't been able to come in, but you showing that you care and, and invest in that. And by the way, it's an automated message, so you don't have to do anything. It's awesome. And it, it will definitely help engender things the right way 99% of the time. Yeah. And if I can jump on that point real quick, I, I think that's a valid point because I think a lot of trainers don't realize that not only do you have to train your clients bodies, but you have to train their behavior, right? So you have to, and that's what the onboarding process is about. And you have to hold them accountable. You have to, I mean, if they're coming to you to lose weight, you're going to have to train them how to eat differently. Otherwise they're not going to lose weight. So you're literally training their behavior. So you have to train their behavior. You train them to the behavior that you want them to have in your facility, either showing up on a regular basis or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and I think it's important to be preemptive and proactive in those situations when you're talking about waking a sleeper, because if you try to recapture somebody after they raise their hand and say, I want to cancel, you're behind the eight ball. Yeah. So you have to you have to anticipate that and prevent that. So identify, OK, if they don't if they do X, Y, Z. Ninety five percent of the time they cancel. So when they do X, that's the time to hit them before they hit Y and Z. So for us, what we do is we generate um, a low attendance. We, we go over in our staff, meet, our management meeting every week. So if anybody hasn't been in in the last 10 days, then we generate a list and then we contact those people. We reach out, we make phone calls to those people. Uh, and that's just 10 days because we know th that our magic number is eight. If yeah. a client doesn't come in eight times a month, eventually they're going to cancel. They're going to become a sleeper and then they're going to cancel, you know? Um, so I think it's really important to have the, that information and be proactive about it. So th those are my two points on, on yours, but continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I think that then that's, that's a perfect example of, of using that, that exact same report is going, Hey, let's be proactive about this. Let's get people in front of it. Um, and also, the salesperson in me loves the fact that you're making phone calls. So the fact that we're able to go, cool, everything else. See, this is this is where I where I come down on people who say, I want to automate everything. Don't automate everything. Just don't. It doesn't work. It's robotic. But if you're able to automate everything except the things that are important, like making sure that someone's hanging around, obviously that's capturing lost revenue. That's that's huge. Um, so that, that's fantastic. So, um, I think other reports that we could potentially use are things like if we have that magic number of eight attendances, let's go who has attended eight, eight times this month. And let's just make sure that tracking against our member count, that that's a significant portion of our members. Um, you know, if, if we've got 250 members on the books, but only 50 of them have attended to our magic number, that's not great. Um, there's things, especially looking at your your trainers, for instance, if your trainers, and a lot of people are like this, where your trainers are responsible for who comes to their classes. Um, so if we look at our, you know, like our activity report and we go, okay, so of the 15 spaces that were available in this class, only five of them have been filled. Only five of them have been filled in the last 10 classes that we've been running. Is that an issue with the class? Is that an issue with the time? Is that an issue with the trainer? Let's figure out what that is. But that that's a really nice one to be able to go look at our all attendances report and go, this trainer has never had a class that's been full. What's the issue there? Is it our issue? Is it their issue? What's, what's going on? Um, and I guess the last thing is to just dive in on that daily takings report again. Um, so that's a really nice one if we look at if I want to see my, my monthly revenue and I want to get a snapshot really quickly of, of where that's come from. I can look at that daily takings report and I can go this month, set the date filters to this month and go, okay, so this month I got, you know, 30% of my revenue from, uh, from ongoing memberships. Most of this came this week from like a, a special class or a special promotion that I ran. Then we did a whole bunch of stuff through the point of sale. That's great. 
but it gives you that breakdown very quickly and very easily. The whole idea is that none of this is revolutionary. All of this is stuff that you want to see and understand anyway, but it's at the, it's at your fingertips as opposed to, you know, sitting there on an Excel spreadsheet for three and a half hours and trying to figure something out. Yeah. And that's why um, Ivan has been so valuable to me because he, when uh, we break down our revenue, I mean, to your point, like when you look at the monthly revenue, you want to see where that's coming from. Like if 30% of that is coming from EFT, I'm nervous. Bump that number up quickly. Because EFT is what is going to be my base of recurring income month to month. So if I if I see all of a sudden a spike one month and then I dive into it and I look, oh, there were two um, year paid in full memberships. So if I just look at that lump number, I might think, oh, business is great. We can expand. And then next month, boom. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's important to know where that is coming from and um, so that you can predict and plan accordingly. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think a, really, a really big part of sorry, a really big part of that as well is um, we have we have a monthly recurring revenue graph that is literally just graphed on your dashboard. Equilux. A lot of people just is up and down. It's just it looks like waves. It's like, whoa, like just all the way along. Um, the good thing about that is let's find what your base point is because yes, it might fluctuate like crazy, but you will have a base point. You'll have consistently month on month. These are the people that are paying me money. Great. So we know exactly where our revenue is. Everything on top of that is gravy. It's awesome. Correct. But let's find that really quickly. Um, so that we're, we're not sort of hanging for that, that extra bit of money that may not come. Gotcha. Okay. That's a great point. And then, um, the last point that we wanted to talk about was software is a tool to help grow your business and not a mechanism to grow your business. So yeah. I, I think I made the analogy of, um, you know, um, blaming the tool for a shoddy job instead of the craftsman. Right. So you want to expand on that point? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, and when we say growth, I, I know I, I get combated by that. A lot of people say, I'm happy with my 100, I'm happy with my 40 members. Fantastic. It's not so much necessarily about growing your, your member base, although it can be. It's about getting to a point where you're comfortable and where your business is working for you. Um, I think that's that's a really important thing. And we've I've, we've recently just done a webinar at Clubworks around that. And we're doing it, another um, run of that very soon. But essentially, it's around what the problem is with either not having a system in place or trying to have too many systems in place. And it boils down to you working for your solution. So you're either spending hours typing something into a spreadsheet or you're writing things down in a book and you've got to consistently flip through that book. Or on the other end of it, you're working for all the business systems you've got in place. You know, you're jumping into your accounting system, you're doing some of that. Then you've got to move across to your marketing system and do some of that. Then you've got to go somewhere else and do, do some of that. And it ends up just chewing away at your time. The whole goal of having Clubworks and having that snapshot of your business is so that you can start to engineer it towards you allowing to, you being allowed to focus on what you want to focus on. I know, Jim, when we, when we first started talking, you told me you did like very, very little training, but a lot of business. Uh, and I'm sure you're a trainer. It's what you want. You want to be training people. So mm -hmm. we can then start to work towards automating all of that information and, and doing all that sort of stuff so that you can get back to training people if you so want, or you can take a couple of days off and do whatever you want to do. Um, getting your business to work from you for you only works if you're able to get to a sustainable point. If you know that your membership base isn't fluctuating by, you know, 25% every month, um, if you're able to go, yep, yeah, my members are happy, they're having a great experience, they're consistently bringing, you know, one friend in a month or something like that. Awesome. Um, that's, that's great. And it's, it's, it's either growth or it's maintaining where you're at. But either way, if it's working for you, that's fantastic. So. I think that that's, that's sort of our goal is to get to the baseline of my business is working for me. I can do the things that I enjoy, whether that's in the business or external to the business um, and making sure that you're not going to be surprised, I think is, is a really big thing as well. So making sure that obviously 
we can't we can't see months and months into the future but if we can say consistently over the last six months i have generated x amount of revenue um then then at least you know sort of what your baseline goal is um so i, th I think really for us it's about making sure that whether it's clubworks whether it's any other system that you get to see what your numbers are you get to know what your targets are you get to know that your staff is doing what you need them to do if you have staff or that you as the business owner is doing what you need to do that you can get take away from the mundane tasks and really focus on everything being a revenue generated activity i think that's a really important thing is everything in a business should be focused towards generating revenue and I mean that in the nicest way possible. I am not saying that your admin person who hates cold calling should pick up the phone and start dialing. Absolutely not. What I'm saying is your admin person should be there. So they're doing a tiny little bit of admin. But as someone comes in, you're saying, hey, how's it, go how's it going? Um, and really making connection with your members. If your members have a positive experience, they're much less likely to cancel. If, I, if they get that positive experience from their trainer, but also from any other staff that are in the building, it's going to like exponentially assist with that because you know they may they may come to a point where they're like man my trainer is really pushing me but no one else in the business seems to care so then they're feeling a little bit deflated but if you've got that that person sitting out the front who's yes obviously checking over a few things or doing a few things there but they're also able to just have a chat it's a it's a nice experience and it's a nice way to blow off steam because I'm sure that you've experienced this, Jim, but a lot of people will come into a gym as sort of like a, a release point. It's sort of like, yes, I'm doing my workout, but I've just had a crazy day and I want to forget about my day and just work on myself. Mm -hmm. They have that ability to sort of discharge that information to someone that's going to remember that. That's that's awesome. If you're like, hey, I know you had a big day, day today. Like, how'd it go? Is everything okay? That one single conversation is worth a lot of dollars. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with him more on, on that. You're, you're talking about automation, automating the mundane stuff and personalizing the, uh, the important stuff. And I tell I tell my staff all the time, first of all, um, I realize that my staff do the majority of the training. So they're my frontline troops. So they can that that information flow goes both ways. So they can kind of tell me what's going on with my clients and I can adjust the business accordingly. But, um, I tell them all the time. So if, if, um, Susie Q, you know, is, uh, having a hard day or had some back came in with some back pain and we work with her, if I can follow up with her later that day for a phone call and text to say, Hey, I know your back was kind of tender when you came in. I just wanted to check in to make sure how's it feeling. Hopefully it's feeling better. And then, and you can go for your run tomorrow morning or something like that. Something like that creates a client for life. Yeah. Something simple like that creates a client for life. Um, and it's just those little things like that. So I, I think that's a that's a very valid point. Um, it, it, it really is. And, and I think it's important to know that um, you have to still – work on your business and grow your business and your bu business philosophy and have the right tool to help you do that. But realize it's a tool. Yeah. It's not the, it's not the main course. So I, I'll, I'll put it to you. I, I'd say it like this. If, um, if you have that, that revenue generating activity, if, if all your people are focused on doing that sort of stuff and they're having that great member experience and creating that member for life, Almost none of that was from your system. You know, you might be able to send an email or a text message through the system. You may be able to automate a couple of follow-ups or something afterwards. Very little of that is from the system. However, the system is the thing that has enabled your staff to be able to, to do that. So I think that's really the, the key point is your business is your business. Your business will run how you run, will, will run and be dependent on how you run the business. Um, but taking advantage of um, of automation and taking advantage of knowing your numbers. Those are the sort of things that, that a system can help you, uh, that a software can help you with. That's a great point. And I think two other points that I would like to make is, is one is knowing what your goals are, knowing what you want from your business. 
you know, for me, my goal is to have my business work for me. Um, and eventually, uh, well, I have it set up, to, uh, like a partnership agreement to kind of be bought out to bring in, um, I, right now it's my general manager and we have an agreement in place, kind of a revenue sharing partner agreement. Uh, so that's my goal. And my goal is, is to be like Rick Mayo where I can take a month off and I don't have a bike, but you know, maybe hike around New Zealand or something for a month. That's my goal, you know, not necessarily New Zealand, but be able to take a month off if I if I want to and not worry about the business. That's that's my goal. So it's I think it's really, really important to understand what you want from your business going in so that you can start to work for that from day one. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a really valid point. So we're getting near the end of our time. And I've asked you all the standard questions. So today I'm going to I'm going to satisfy my own curiosity, which is really why I started the podcast <laughs> uh, in the first place. It's it's real easy. My bar for the podcast is if I'm interested in it, if I think it's interesting, if I like it, that's what I'm going to put on. So I hope everybody else likes it, too. Uh, and if they don't, I'll still watch. I'll still do it. <laughs> um, so. I'm going to satisfy my curiosity. So I know when we were talking earlier, you are from Australia by way of Canada, correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So how long have you been in Australia? 20, 21 years. Oh, so a long time. So long time. I'm going to sound like just probably a, just a typical American idiot. But so tell us like an indigenous dish over there that – we don't know about oh wow okay um first of all when you said that you want to come for a when you want to go you know have your business be self-sufficient and uh come for a hike you're going to the wrong country first of all come come over here we'll uh we'll take you to the outback and you can uh you can hang around with clubworks for a while uh, <laughs> okay but i think uh probably i'll, I'll go back to and anyone that's listening to this is going to shoot me. So we've either got uh, damper, which is essentially like a camping bread. Uh, so it's like a, a bread that you make in a camping oven, essentially. Uh, fairly tasteless, but it's nice to have with you know spreads and those sort of things. And I guess the other one for me uh, is who wants to eat some kangaroo? Oh, kangaroo. What's what's that like? Can you eat kangaroo? Is that legal? You can. You can. That's, oh, it's wow. more than legal. They're, they're basically a pest over here. Oh, as much really? as you love them, they're, they're, that, they're, you know, they're, they're destroying the environment very quickly. So um, it's definitely something that you can't eat. People have them as so people have kangaroo sausages. You can get kangaroo steaks, anything you want. Um, it's very dense meat, but it's, so it's, it's enjoyable. So it's, it's pretty gamey. Is it gamey? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, but it's probably like I'm. I'm assuming they don't have kangaroo farms or anything like that. If it was yeah. America, they'd have kangaroo. For, they'd have some kind of industrial kangaroo farm cranking out kangaroo meat. But over there, everything there, it's kind of you know just wild, right? Yeah, more or less. I think it's. Uh, let's get a couple of the boys in out of some um, some ranch or something somewhere to to drive around and shoot a couple of kangaroo for us, so we can have them for dinner. I yeah. think that's more of the, the way things. I'm sure there is a kangaroo farm somewhere. Someone's thought of that, but yeah. it's not mainstream for sure. Okay. And are those suckers as mean as uh, people make them out to be? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're, they're amazing creatures. They're beautiful creatures, but don't get in their way and don't pick a fight because they will destroy you. Really? Mm. Wow. So have you ever seen anybody get in a fight with a kangaroo or had any encounters yourself? Uh, my, I've seen cars get in fights with kangaroos and the car comes off second best most of the time. Yeah. Wow. It's like, Oh, you I, mean, I, so like if they run out of the road, you hit them. Yeah. Yeah. That's like over here. A deer is the same way. Yeah. I was just saying yeah. it's a very similar to a deer, but. Oh yeah. I mean, they will jack your car up and get, you can get seriously yeah. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember going up sort of up North from here, um, a little bit, not too far, but, uh, and staying with some some relatives and one of them came home and was like hey you guys should probably check out the car i just had an encounter with a kangaroo and it was literally like one of those scenes from a movie where you walk out and the whole thing's just sort of slowly falling apart wow 
Yeah. So well, what, like, what do they get up to? Um, well, you guys do kilos. So what do they get up to in kilos? Oh, they'd be, they'd be huge. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but well over the size of a normal man, I'd say. Seriously. Yeah. It's huge. So like over like a hundred kilos. Probably. Holy shit. Yeah. 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 That's, wow. that's really big boys. Yeah. And those are the males, not the females, I assume. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You're, you're testing my, my knowledge of the, uh, okay. the, the Australian animals now, but yeah, I, I believe so. There's some okay. really, really big ones. Okay. So you're pretty much a native Australian. So you live in Brisbane. So what other cities or what other places have you been and what's your favorite? Who, where would you recommend someone to go if they've never been to Australia? Uh, I mean, I'm going to, it's probably, I love, I love Brizzy. So Brisbane is, um, is capital of my state, which is Queensland. And I'm a Queenslander by far the best, the, the best state of the, of the Australian states. Um, having said that, you should probably go to Sydney, uh, Sydney or Melbourne still, uh, still great places to, to visit and, and hang around. There's still so much going on there. Um, when you get up to Queensland, it's a lot more spread out. Uh, we tend to take things not so seriously. Um, depends on what you want to do. I mean, I've lived on the Gold Coast, so that's just south of Brisbane for, for a while. And that's, uh, that's sort of one of the key touristy spots. It's, it's nice. And it's, it's, if you're looking for a slightly quieter place, um, but in terms of Sydney, it's still nowhere near a, a big US city or anything like that. Um, we're still very, very quickly growing, but nowhere near the size of what I've heard you guys are. Okay. Awesome. All right. Good information. So there's, there it is. You're not only is he knowledgeable about software, but he's a great tour guide. If you ever want to go to Australia and let's face it, who doesn't want to go to Australia? You That's know? It. Yeah. You guys, I mean, you are extra friendly because over here, Canadians are known as the nicest, most friendly people. And they really are. Uh, I've had several experiences and it's amazing, you know, but Australia is also known as a uh, friendly place. So you're, you're double friendly being from Canada and Australia. So uh, hopefully I'll make it, I'm sure it's on my bucket list. So I'll make it over there sometime and hopefully I'll be able to look you guys up in uh, what do you call it? Brizzy? Brizzy. Yeah. 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 I'm like an you already. Yes. Uh, take me up to Brizzy, mate. Um, how's hey, that sound? <laughs> Uh, awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Freddie. Um, and if people want to get in touch with you or Ian, what's the best way to do that? Um, so pop through to Clubworks, uh, send us through a, a support message. So it's just Clubworks with an X dot com. Uh, send us through a support message. Click on the book a demo page. Jump on a free trial. Any of those ways to to register your information will uh, will reach out. Um, or you're welcome to just email me at just Freddie at Clubworks dot com. Um, and we'll, we'll get in contact from there. No matter what the conversation is, we'd love to have it. So feel free to reach out. Awesome. Great. And all that information will be in the show notes. So to go to trainergym.net and click on this episode of the show and the notes, to, uh, the links to contact Freddie will be in the show notes. So Freddie, thanks again. Have a good day. I know it's uh, bright and early over there. So I hope you, thanks for starting your day with us and I hope you have a great day and I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. I'll definitely be in contact, but uh, thanks for taking the time to be on the, on the podcast. I really appreciate it. No worries, Jim. Really appreciate you having me and it's been great to, to have a good chat. And uh, if you're ever down in Australia, safe bet is just to add E to the end of anything. So just anything that ends with Y, you're probably pretty close. Okay. I, uh, I roll with this guy, uh, who does a great Australian accent. I can't, I can't do it. I'm terrible at accents unless it's a, like a Southern U S accent. I can do a great one of those, but other than that, I'm terrible at accents, but he does a great Australian accent. So I'll, I'll work with him before I head over. Sounds good. Looking okay. forward to catching up with him when you get here. Okay. All right. Thanks Freddie. Have a great day, man. All right. Bye.